Hello everyone, welcome back to the Marshall. Today we're going to be watching um, Napoleon, Conquest of Europe, uh, 1805 to 1812. Um, uh, sorry, 1812 just. Uh, sorry, I'm Danish. So <laughs> not the best at English, but anyway. Uh, so the, um, it's made by Geo History. I've already reacted to the first video. Watch the first go into the link and watch the first one if you already haven't um yeah so um yeah, let's just get into it france and its spanish ally are at war against the united kingdom napoleon's great army or the so-called grande armée is gathered along the channel coast ready to invade the island i think they were i'm pretty sure they were scattered all around the French coast and the Dutch coast prepare for this invasion, actually. So, uh, it doesn't matter, but, yeah. To this end, Napoleon asks the French Mediterranean fleet to head for the Caribbean to lure the powerful Royal Navy. They must then rush back to the English Channel to facilitate a military landing. But upon their return, the plan fails. The French fleet is spotted and attacked along the Spanish coast, forcing its retreat to Cadiz. But Napoleon, the recently named French Emperor and the King of Italy, has already changed his plan since the United Kingdom convinced Russia and Austria to form a new anti-French coalition. The Brit Yeah, um, I've, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Austrians were provoked by the fact that Napoleon now called himself King of Italy, which made it seem like he was claiming all of Italy. Um, so they were provoked by that and also just because it was just hateful towards Napoleon because he had won two bad, two wars against them. So yeah, I'm also sure that Sweden will go into the war and Naples also will go will declare war. British would finance the war. Austria sends an army to Italy and a second to Bavaria where the Russian army would join. Napoleon then sends his great army at full speed to Bavaria in order to arrive before the Russians. He organizes a diversion by sending an army corps into the Black Forest where the Austrians wait, ready to fight, while the main battalion of the army gets around them in the north. This was a huge maneuver they did. Essentially, Morat goes down and distracts, distracts Max's army with the cavalry, while Napoleon and all the corps move around them to the north and they do it in such an impressive amount of time a little over two weeks they go from the french coast to the dutch and uh, no sorry not du dutch the french and dutch coast all the way down to Germany, to south germany and traps them at ulm it's really impressive and mac was taken by surprise completely and they and really did not see it come so um yeah just incredible speed, he, he moved his army. The Austrian army discovers, too late, that they are surrounded. Five days later, 25,000 soldiers surrender without a fight. Meanwhile, Napoleon orders his fleet, still blocked in Cadiz, to join the Mediterranean. The French and Spanish fleets try to end the British blockade, but are destroyed by the fleet of Admiral Nelson, who dies during the battle. And Nelson is, of course, a huge legend in um, in Britain because of his victory. Trafalgar Square is, of course, a good um, uh, a good example of how famous he became. And of course, um, he died. I think moments after he received the word that he had won. I don't remember what his final words were, but I'm pretty sure it was something like, "Britain will hopefully remember me for this victory" or something like that. I don't remember the exact words, but yeah, it, incredible victory. With this victory, the United Kingdom reaffirms its maritime supremacy. In Austria, the Russian army retreats towards the northeast to await reinforcements, paving the way for the French to Vienna. Meanwhile in the south, a second Austrian army is defeated and retreats. Napoleon seizes the Austrian capital. He decides to leave a big part of his army there and leaves with 60,000 soldiers to meet the army of Alexander I of Russia, which has received reinforcements from Francis II. As he is outnumbered, Napoleon decides to station his troops on the strategic plateau of Pratzen. He studies the field and devises a plan. 
on the evening of December the 1st, as the Austro-Russian army approaches, he orders his troops to retreat, pretending to flee. The army of the Allies jumps on the opportunity and seizes the plateau for the night. By the way, it happened on the one-year anniversary of Napoleon's crowning the Battle of Auschwitz. His coronation happened the 2nd of December, 1804, and this happened in 1805, the same day, uh, the Battle of Auschwitz. The next morning, convinced that the French are retreating, 40,000 Russians charge towards the south. The outnumbered French army tries to hold them back best as they can. But further north, hidden behind the hills, the bulk of the French army launches a surprise attack and takes back the plateau. There was also Marshal Davout who was coming. Uh, he was uh, I, he was a bit delayed. He came from uh, he was marching from Vienna and he arrived just so he could reinforce uh, the the left flank of the of the French army. And um, yeah, the rest of the army enveloped them. Um, just enveloped them and pushed them away, of, as he said. As he said, um, not all Russian commanders were in favor of it. It was actually Alexander and Franz II, the emperors of Ru or Russia of, and Austria, that um, won the attack. Marshal Kutuzov, I think he was a marshal, but um, still, Marshal Kutuzov once uh, wanted to um, to uh, be cautious, and he kind of he had in a way kind of seen what was going on. He was he argued for a bit more cautious. Uh, not to directly attack them. The Austro-Russian army find itself split in two. The Russians try at all costs to take back the plateau, but fail. The army in the north is pushed back to the east, while the French surround thousands of Russian soldiers in the south. Russian troops panic and surrender, or try to escape on frozen ponds, which are targeted by French artillery fire. With the French victory complete, the Emperor of Austria negotiates peace. He loses control over the German states, marking the end of the Holy Roman Empire, which would gradually be replaced by the Confederation of the Rhine under Napoleon's protection. Napoleon appoints his brother Joseph as the King of Naples and his other brother Louis as the King of Holland. He also begins the construction of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris to celebrate future victories. He also uh, makes the Kingdom of Bavaria and Württemberg, both of which are southern German states, he makes them into um, to, uh, kingdoms because of the, their help and, and completely reorganizes Germany, actually. He rewards the, uh, the states that have helped him with new territories uh, and new titles and stuff like that. And... Uh, uh, punishes uh, Austria with, by taking territories away from them. Prussia dislikes French management of the German states, so comes together with other powers to form a fourth coalition against France. Three they are also angry at um, the fact that Napoleon had given them Hanover, which he had taken from Britain, to a um, to keep them in line because they were because Prussia wanted to clear a war against France after the the victory at Austerlitz, but um, but they don't because he gives them Hanover. But now he actually considers giving it back to the British on the condition that they will make peace with him, and um, yeah, that provokes them into going into war again against Napoleon. Prussian armies enter Saxony and an ultimatum is given to the French, demanding their withdrawal to the west of the Rhine. This Napoleon was just a disaster. The, the, the ultimatum was just a disaster. Because it, it just provoked, instead of, he, 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 the king of Prussia, Frederick William III, thinks that it will cause them to retreat. But in reality, it merely just caused the German states to be angry at Prussia because now he, he sounds like they are he, they are trying to dominate them. So um, yeah. Napoleon goes to meet them with his great army. Initial contact is established. The French immediately get the upper hand, causing the Prussian armies to turn back to Leipzig. But the French army, which is faster, catches up and positions itself between the two main armies. Napoleon then makes an error of judgment. Thinking that the great Prussian army is in the south, he sends a small army of 25,000 men to the north. 
they find themselves confronted by the great Prussian army of over 60,000 men. However, despite the odds, both battles are won by the French that day, opening the doors of Berlin to Napoleon. There was also... Um, so essentially, what happens is that he thinks that uh, the main army, as he, as he says, the main army is in the south, with where General, where the Duke of Brunswick and the King of Prussia, Frederick William III, is located. So he only sends a small force, the first and third corps, under Marshal Bernadotte and Marshal Davout, up to the north, to merely just cut off the retreat in his eyes. But um, he's wrong. And um, not only that, but the first corps under Bernadotte gets confused. Um, I think that's what happened. Um, it's confused by the order, so they are actually in between the two armies. So they are not actually in any of the battles. They are in between the battles, not really being deployed anywhere. So um, it's the Marshal Davout's third corps against the bulk of the Prussian army. And he somehow wins, despite the fact that he was up against over double the size of his own as an army, he was against an army double the size of his own corps, and he still won. He still wins, primarily because the fact that um, that uh, the Duke of Brunswick uh, dies during the battle, and Frederick William is forced to kind of uh, take what he has left and try to uh, get a victory. It doesn't work for him. With Prussia defeated, Napoleon attacks Russia. Along the way, he enters Polish territory, which was captured and shared between Russia, Prussia and Austria 10 years earlier. The French are welcomed as heroes and thousands of people join the ranks of the army. And this is nothing new. M many Polish fought in revolutionary armies. They fought, some fought for the Americans, actually. And people like Totowski, I think that's how he pronounced his name, will, uh, would have actually volunteered during the French Revolutionary Wars. The entire the Polish national anthem actually is about uh, the Polish who fight for Napoleon in Italy um, uh, in, 18, in 1796. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, there was overwhelming support for the French in, um, in the Polish territories. The Russians avoid battle and retreat to await reinforcements. Eventually, the and it's of course around this time where he gets into a relationship. Napoleon gets into a relationship with um, with Marie, Marie Walewska, a Polish noblewoman in in Warsaw, and um, they of course will have a child and be and she will be a mistress for a very long time, which only may, means that Napoleon supports the Polish even more because now he has a mistress who is Polish. Polish. Two armies start fighting. Two days of fierce battles ensue, causing thousands of fatalities. Both sides are tested and need time to recruit new forces. Four months later, the Russians try to surprise the French by launching a frontal attack. But they are repelled and chased. A second decisive battle drives the Russian army beyond the Niemen River. Exhausted. And Friedland was one of Napoleon's most decisive victories. 40% of the Russian army is either killed, wounded, or captured. And it all happened because uh, Bennigsen, the German commander in charge of the Russian army, he thinks that he can uh, defeat Marshal Lange's reserve corps at the city of uh, Friedland. So he crossed the ri a river. The Niemen, I don't think it was the Niemen, but he crossed the river and tries to def defeat the reserve army, but Napoleon comes with his... his, with his all of his army and um, defeats them uh, while their back is up against the river and they're unable to retreat so it's 40 percent casualties for the russians absolutely insane and um, the russians are forced to, forced to uh, surrender after that fostered by war neither side is able to gain supremacy over the other a peace treaty is prepared <laughs> Both sides meet on a raft especially built for the occasion on the Niemen River, where Napoleon and Tsar Alexander I negotiate. According to the terms of the treaty, Prussia loses half of its territory. Its western territories are annexed to the Kingdom of Westphalia, of which Jerome Bonaparte becomes the king. In the east, yeah, Jerome becomes um, king.
King of Westphalia. Without a doubt, the worst person you could have put make King. Um, snobbish and not very educated man, Jerome was, and um, he rarely read a he rarely read, for example, and he spent most of his time just getting medals for his um, for his um, uniform and conducting parades and stuff like that. Eventually, the Westphalians stopped liking him all that much, but um, but yeah. East, the Duchy of Warsaw is created. Allied with France, this new state could act as a strategic buffer in case of future war. Russia, on the other hand, gets the authorization to seize Finland. Finally, the two powers ally against the United Kingdom, which finds itself squeezed by French domination on the continent. Weakened by wars, the UK faces a difficult economic situation. And now, Napoleon tries to deliver a final blow by imposing a continental blockade. No European port may accept British commercial vessels. But no Created the 21th of November 1806, the continental blockade was, as he says, trying to starve um, the British. But what Napoleon kind of forgets is that his fleet had been destroyed to Falca. So how can you enforce it um, without a fleet? And it just becomes this massive economic disaster for the French because suddenly uh, the British just smuggle, smuggle goods in and many of the client states are not willing to enforce it and it's because, just because this massive disaster and also drags him into the war as we will get to just in a moment in the, it, will, it will drag him into the war in on the peninsula on the Iberian Peninsula and yeah that will be the beginning of the end for Napoleon Not everyone agrees with this policy including <laughs> In response, Napoleon wants to invade Portugal. Its Spanish ally joins the offensive and allows French troops to cross its territory. The following month, the Franco-Spanish army seizes Lisbon, forcing the royal family to flee to Brazil. But and they're aided by the British who kind of steals their navy, which is something that we are going to see a couple of times. Uh, yeah, the Portuguese fleet is stolen by the... by the... by the... Uh, the British. A part of victory, new French troops are sent to Spain. Napoleon begins to show a new interest in Spain, which is no longer the great power it once was. After a coup attempt orchestrated by Ferdinand against his father, King. And the Spanish king um, is a lazy man who spends most of his time just hunting and does very little governing, which is why Ferdinand. Uh, tries to overthrow him and reinstate himself as uh, king. King Charles IV both go to Bayonne to ask Napoleon to resolve the situation. Meanwhile in Madrid, people rise against the French occupiers. The revolt is violently put down. Napoleon then decides to place his brother... That was, that was the uh, revolt of Dos Mayo, uh, the fifth. I think that literally means the third, I think it was the third of May. I, I think that's it. Uh, Mora is sent to Madrid, and it and it goes badly. Um, the Egyptian soldiers are forced to uh, the Egyptian soldiers in French command is forced to slaughter many uh, Spanish civilians to keep uh, the order in Madrid. Joseph on the throne of the country, while his brother-in-law Murat gets the kingdom of Naples. The French brutality in Madrid infuriates the Spanish population. Throughout the country, militias form and organize a guerrilla warfare against the French, targeting isolated garrisons and lines of communication. The French are tortured and slaughtered. In response, French armies burn to the ground villages suspected of harboring rebels. In the years to come, France... It will be a disaster. This will just be a disaster because the French army is forced to spread out to deal with these Gorillas. That's it, the term gorilla and guerrilla warfare comes from Spain. Gorilla means warrior. Um, so um, yeah, they're forced to spread out to deal with these gorillas. But on the other hand, they also have soon a British army under uh, Wellington or oh, Arthur Wilsley, as he is called by this time. He will only become Wellington after the Battle of Talavera. Uh, he will uh, pose a threat against the French. So uh, essentially, there's an army. Several armies, in fact, but the most dangerous one is the is the British army, and um, 
and uh, but also there are these gorillas, so they have to spread out to deal with the gorillas, but they also have to gather, sometimes gather the armies to deal with the British. And it just becomes this dilemma where they cannot really do anything effectively, the French. And not only that, but many of the, there were Spanish soldiers in the French army at this point. For example, there was a plan at this time because Denmark had allied itself with France, was allied with France, and they were planning to invade Sweden from, um, Zealand. Um, so there, were, there was a French army gathering in Zealand to invade Sweden under the uh, command of Jean Baptiste Bernadotte. But that was, that was forced to de- be stopped, uh, cancelled that, um, that invasion of Sweden from Zealand because Spanish soldiers defected. And in this massive operation, we were able to leave Denmark and go back to Spain. And um, yeah, they were forced to just cancel it. Because they simply didn't have any soldiers, because the Spanish refused to fight after France had invaded Spain and made Joseph the king of Spain. France would need to constantly strengthen its military presence to try and defeat rebel strongholds. In the south, a French army is defeated. In panic, Joseph Bonaparte flees Madrid with his army. The news spreads throughout Europe, reinforcing anti-French sentiments. Meanwhile, a British army contingent lands in Portugal. Napoleon wants to settle things himself with his great army. But fearful of being outflanked in the east, he organizes a meeting with the Tsar to try and strengthen their alliance, but in vain. He still sends part of his army to... And at this point, former foreign minister, um... Uh, Talleyrand and Fouché. I th- I don't remember what he exactly was this time. I think he still was police minister or, s- or whatever you called it. They were actively trying behind Napoleon's back to kind of for to kind of make Alexander hate him <laughs> and kind of work be- worked to orchestrate Napoleon's downfall from the shadows at the meeting at Arthur Arthur. Um, and yeah. It was around this time where Alexander begins to go away from Napoleon and begin to stop being in line with the French and become enemies of the French again. Yeah. To the peninsula, where the Spanish armies, divided and poorly organized, are crushed in a month. While advancing on the British army, Napoleon learns that Austria is ready to go to war. Leaving his army in Spain, he quickly heads eastwards, where the Austrian army enters Bavaria. They hope to be joined by Prussia and the Confederation of the Rhine, driven by rising German nationalism. But it would not happen. Meanwhile, Napoleon asks Russia to go to war against Austria, which it declines. I'm pretty sure they will eventually go into the war with a small force, but they will do it really late. And the Archduke Charles, who is a veteran of the Revolutionary War and fought against uh, Moreau and uh Chardon in German in the German campaigns he is called up to try to defeat Napoleon here he almost captures he almost defeats the um, the German army the French army stationed in Germany under uh, Berthier who is Napoleon's st- chief of staff but a very bad commander in the field when he's command but sadly Napoleon arrives and just in time time and um, is able to save the army A fifth coalition is formed, but in fact, Austria finds itself alone against Napoleon. Within days, the Austrian army is divided into two. The main body manages to flee north of the Danube, leaving Vienna defenseless. Napoleon seizes the Austrian capital for the second time, while the Austrian army positions itself north of the Danube. To complete victory, Napoleon must find a way to cross the river, but all bridges are destroyed. He begins building bridges and attempts to cross with his army. But a powerful Austrian offensive pushes them back to the island of Lobau. It was, as per nesting was disaster because the bridges constantly broke because they were not, they were poorly built and built and the Austrians would throw the, it will, uh, put debris and uh, stuff down in the river so that the British would be destroyed by them. And um, yeah, they are forced to retreat. The first major defeat of Napoleon in many years. 
and um, yeah, that um, yeah. <laughs> this is Napoleon's first major defeat. He moves back to Vienna to strengthen his army and organize a new offensive. In one night, he makes more than one hundred and. He calls the Italian army many and many other calls to come to to um, to Austria to help him. Yeah, and Bernadotte is also called up. 40,000 soldiers cross the Danube. Over two days of fierce and bloody fighting, the Austrians retreat and ask for an armistice. As per... At the battle, Bernadotte um, actually really uh, goofs up and he retreats from a city in the middle of the line which he was supposed to hell and hold and it caused confusions confusion almost and almost caused a defeat for Napoleon not only that but after the battle he congratulates the Saxon corps for their heroics during the battle and um, yeah he will be sent to the Dutch coast where he will uh, take care of a English uh, landing that happened there and he will do something really stupid and accidentally publish the uh, the numbers he has in his in his army so that the enemy can read how many soldiers he has and yeah that will be that will cause him to basically be thrown out of the army for a bit of time he will luckily become the king of sweden so it worked out for him anyway after this unfavorable peace treaty austria loses many of its territories and its access to the sea moreover napoleon there divorces all, some of the territories will also be given to russia to keep them happy but they are at this time preparing to go out of the uh, the uh, the continental blockade josephine with whom he cannot get legitimate heirs and marries marie louise daughter of the emperor of austria with whom he hopes to have a he child. basically makes an ultimatum to the austria to the to the austrian ambassador telling him hey um we want i want to marry marie louise that's just how it's going to be and then you have to do, do it for me <laughs> have to make it happen you know <laughs> it yeah it was kind of prov provocative child in France, Napoleon becomes increasingly authoritarian, jailing political opponents, censoring the media, and spreading his propaganda. The economic situation of the country worsens. Wars, and especially the 300,000 soldiers stationed in Spain, are expensive and require a lot of resources. On March the 20th, 1811, Marie-Louise gives birth to Napoleon's much-awaited heir. The baby receives the title of the King of Rome. In Portugal, Pope Pius VI is at this point been arrested and is at house arrest. I don't remember where. I think it was in. I don't. I don't remember where. But he had been in house arrest. He was. He's still the Pope, but he's on a French house arrest. So yeah. He, Na, so Napoleon crowns his son, great king of it's uh, Rome, and yeah. A new British army led by Wellington takes over and pushes the French army away. The French army requests reinforcements. I think that's referring to the third invasion of Portugal where Andrew Massena is forced out. You know that famous line, so Prince of Wrestling, you are no longer Massena. You know, Massena, who had been one of the heroes in Austria, it does so badly in Portugal that he loses. Uh, he will never work for the army again. Reinforcements from Napoleon. But these remain unanswered as he focuses all his strength on the Duchy of Warsaw. The relationship with Russia deteriorates, causing Napoleon to prepare for the invasion of the country. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, looking forward to watching the third and last part of this three-part series about Napoleon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.